Hey, Kia, how are you doing? Come on, I'm I'm good, man. I I just finished my day. I'm I'm um, in pre-production on a giant shark World War Two movie. Um, so I'm going oh. from giant spiders to giant sharks. I'm working my way through all the terrifying creatures that I can. Wow, so a lot of fear of the human race. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm from Australia, so, you know, we have really big spiders and we have really big sharks. So, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, we tend to like make films about these right? things. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. If you're a filmmaker here, eventually you're going to do one of them, you know. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. But but the fascinating thing is that you actually said that you're you're actually afraid yourself of spiders, right? Yeah, I have like pretty crippling arachnophobia, so... um yeah, like when I see a spider, like my first reaction is to scream like a little girl, you know, um, and uh, I just want to start crying, you know, like I have a I have a visceral reaction to spiders. There's something about the eight legged thing, uh, you know, I, I, I don't like it. Anything with eight legs and mandibles, I don't trust, you know. Right, right, right. You know, I, I actually had an encounter yesterday, which is such a huge coincidence because I've seen your movie like two days ago. And then yesterday yeah. went out for a run and I came home and then there was like actually a spider hanging down from my hair like Ooh, it, no, no. it wasn't the big That's one but still yeah. you, you don't want spiders to bungee jump from your head right so it's like very no like a moment and then i was trying to grab the web and put it down but it always <laughs> tried to reclimb my hand <laughs> No, 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 that's that's not okay. That's like a real 3D experience, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, right, that's right. way too close to the eyeball. Yeah. And it was not animatronic, so <laughs> Um, yeah, the animatronic ones are a little bit easier to deal with. They they do tend to take direction, right? And the, the, you ha you are in control of them, right? <laughs> I am in control. Although the the wetter puppeteers used to love, like I would get in close to check the mandibles, and without me knowing, they'd be behind it and make it move, and they'd make <laughs> no. the mandibles. I'd, I'd, they'd have me screaming, like seriously, <laughs> like yeah. I'd, and they were counting how many times they could get me to scream, and I think it was up to like five or six. Eventually, I just. I oh, wouldn't wow. go near. I wouldn't go near the wetter puppet until I. I was like, all the puppeteers have to get out of the way, like, because I knew that they were going to trick me. You know. Oh, that's so mean. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> but but would you say you know as a, as a director and storyteller would you say that it's almost like crucial or necessary to be afraid of the things that you actually put in your horror films because I can imagine if you are not afraid of spiders then how do you know what it exa what exactly it is that people are afraid yeah. of? I don't think it's crucial, but I think it helps. I think a lot of people have the idea of horror filmmakers that they're big and tough and scary and, like, they have mental problems and, you know, like, the, they're yeah. all just serial killers. But the truth about horror filmmakers generally, from my experience, is that they're actually scared little children in adults' bodies and they're usually you know the people who you know needed to sleep with the night light on because they were so scared when they were kids and um so all of those things that they grew up being terrified of um usually i mean that stems from like an intense anxiety so a lot of horror filmmakers actually use their own fears and their anxiety to 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 make these films and so yeah like um when i was trying to think up you know the the scariest thing that i could possibly think of um i just couldn't think of anything scarier than you know, a spider the size of a pit bull terrier that's going to bite you um, and then drag you into an air conditioning duct and eat you slowly, you know, while you're paralyzed and can't do anything about it. I just couldn't think of anything worse than that. And so that's what I made a movie about. Right. And, and I mean, one character that is definitely not afraid of spiders, at least at the beginning, is Charlotte. Um, yeah. She's like, she kind of reminded me of my own childhood. I'm sure that many people feel that way. You know, like when you start to be curious about animals and you want to understand them and, you know, like she's feeding the spider and she just wants to see how it hunts, how it develops and everything. I was wondering, do you like remember like similar stuff from when you were a child, you know, when it started to become like a uh, fascination, how animals live and how they yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of, I mean, I'm terrified of spiders, but when I was in my early teens, we had this tiny little black spider that looked a lot like Sting that lived in our windowsill. Oh. And um, I developed this weird relationship with it where I would like capture flies and I'd put it in the web 
and I'd sit there like watching <laughs> while the spider would come and grab the fly and then, you know, wrap it up in a little uh, thing and then and devour it. I mean, actually, now that I'm saying that, that sounds pretty sick and twisted. I was like some, it was like Renfield from Dracula, you know, Renfield, how he's yeah. feeding them. I must feed the master, you know, and I got obsessed with this spider and it grew fat. Um over over Whoa. many weeks of me doing this um and then it just disappeared i think it just got sick of all the free food but um <laughs> yeah i i th there is a fascination to to feeding animals you know that uh, especially kids get into you know um, i think if you're yeah. still into that when you're an adult there's probably something wrong with you but um yeah that was very much based on on something true and and um i'm terrified of spiders but alila brown um who played charlotte and who also played the young furiosa more recently who who Right. As a side note, is one of the the most amazing actors I've ever worked with. She's twelve years old and just beyond star power. Like she is so talented. Um, but she wasn't scared of spiders at all. Like not even vaguely. So she's the sort of person who could have a tarantula just running around on her arm, and she'd be giggling, you know. Yeah. So um, wow. yeah, she 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 loved uh, she loved spiders, and uh, that was good for the part. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, and, and her talent really shines through, especially, you know, like when when we have like the more emotional stuff, because what I really like about the movie is that you actually decided to, yes, deliver all the monster action that the, that that horror fans will expect. But it's also very character driven because you focus on this family and this relationship, yeah. with the characters. And so we see like the relationships develop while we, while we also see Sting developing. So and one of the things that I actually liked was was that that um, Ethan and Charlotte are like artists. He's working on a comic and and then she yeah. like using ideas from her and stuff. And I was wondering um, because he's not he doesn't feel comfortable at first to show her where he is at with his drawings. And I was yeah. wondering, as a filmmaker, um, at which state of production do you feel comfortable the most to share what you've been working on? Oh, well, I mean, again, that's all very much based on real stuff. So the family in Sting is based on my family. So at the time, you know, I was oh, married wow. and, and I, I just yeah. had a, a baby with my wife and it was like right in the middle of COVID. So we were all stuck in the house together. I'm a stepfather. So my stepdaughter is very much was very much like Charlotte at the time. And so she's incredibly gifted as an artist. And mm -hmm. I often share my scripts and my films with her. Um, and she's always asking to see edits before they're ready. And so I'm like, no, 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 wait till it's ready. Uh, you know, like I, I prefer to wait until the whole thing's finished before yeah. I show her because her of all people, because she's, you know, um, you know, she was a teenager at the time, like more than anybody in my life, I'm nervous about showing my stuff to my stepdaughter because she's, Ooh. You know she's young and she's you know she's got a great eye but you know she yeah, can also yeah, yeah. Get, be really judgmental and i'm just like i really want to get it right so i don't like to show her any of my stuff before it's ready so again that's all just that's all just based on real stuff but yeah i, I um even when i'm doing my edit usually you know my co-editor will do an assembly i won't let producers even watch the assembly i'm like don't even talk to me about it until i've been able to go through and do my director's assembly so yeah. i'm very controlling in that way as an artist you know I, I like people to see things in only the best possible way that they can you know yeah that is very interesting that then how about because because ethan he's too afraid to tell charlotte the truth about not liking the stuff with the eyes that she does yeah it's only because as a filmmaker you you like deal with many, many, many opinions because the DOP might share an opinion with you. Yeah, on, might be great on the film or the editor later on, the color grader, yeah. whatever. Who whoever is working with you has their own ideas. And I was wondering, how do you make sure nowadays that um, you're like when you don't like something that you really say it, no matter how enthusiastic the other person feels about their ideas. Well, usually as a director, I try to just be really honest. And if somebody gives me an idea, I'm just like, oh, yeah, you know, that's, yeah, no, I don't want to do that. It's good, but I don't want to do it. You know, I don't want to do it a different way. You know, so it's best just to like, you know, you rip the Band-Aid off, you know, don't pull it off. You know, it's best just to like be really honest. But also sometimes you get in those really awkward situations where you, you know, somebody gives you an idea and you're sort of forced to go, oh, yeah, that's really cool, you know, and you just pretend like it's a cool idea and then you, you walk away and you're just like, that's the fucking worst idea I've ever heard, you know, um, but you don't want to tell them. And especially when it's somebody close to you, like your daughter or your or your wife or something, you don't want to hurt their feelings. So sometimes you um, you lie. 
Yeah. And that's what he does. You know, Um, you know, he lies to her. He says he likes her idea and he doesn't. And unfortunately that idea was linked to, you know, her biological father. So not only is he lying about an idea that she's given him, he's lying about an idea that she's given him that's actually quite personal to her. And so as an artist, you can, you can really get into trouble when, um, you know, you're, you're dealing with personal stuff um, and personal ideas. And, and I had to run that gamut um, in, in, in this film, you know, like I wrote a film that was quite personal. So I had to show it to my wife and I had to show it to my stepdaughter and get their approval and, and make sure that they were, they were okay with it. And, and, and luckily they, they both, you know, were, were fine with it, you know? But yeah, sometimes somebody gives you a terrible idea and you just straight up lie and um, say that you like it. And it's never a good idea as an artist because it always, you always run into trouble later on. So, yeah. Absolutely. Seriously, Kia, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate talking to you and uh, for your time. Thank you so much. And obviously, you have all the best for, for not only this film Sting, the German release, but also for your shark film. Very curious to see that one as well. Yeah, that's a weird one. That's like a riff on the um, uh, SS Indianapolis speech in Jaws. Um, so in Australia, there was a ship that went down in 1942 called the HMAS Armadale. And um, so that sunk halfway between Darmo- uh, uh, Darwin and East Timor. And yeah. hundreds of Australian soldiers went into the ocean and got eaten by sharks. Yeah. And so um, that's what my film's about. 